So hello again, everyone. Uh, good to see you all again. And glad uh, that we're able to uh, get together online in these new circumstances. I've been asked to um, share some reflections on social movements and a sense of belonging, and more specifically how movements like uh, Black Lives Matter affect conversations and educational dynamics and, and policies um, in higher education. And I've prepared some slides to engage in a um, conversation with you. And what I basically want to do is to offer a reflection on the broader social context and then related to um, how that is reflected on a micro level in educational institutions and specifically also in what this means for students within those institutions and how that affects their sense of belonging. So we're, we're living in an interesting time where there's a collective consciousness and awakening of how institutional racism affects societies. And, and later on in this uh, uh, session, I'll also highlight how that has affected uh, conversations in higher education. When we talk about diversity in the classroom, oftentimes it's about, well, if we don't have the students who we consider diverse, then we don't have to have a conversation. And really it's a conversation that relates to everyone because the diversity relates to everyone, you know? What I wanted to discuss now is um, how uh, these developments in society are actually also reflected in what's going on in higher education. And I wanted to give two examples. You might have seen how protesters in Bristol in the UK brought down a statue of uh, slave trader Edward Colston. So this happens in a city. And I don't know if, if you've heard of the students who wanted to bring down the statue of Leopold II in Belgium. So this is the KU Leuven. So this is a university where students demand that these statues are being taken down because they have critique on the colonial history and how that affects sense of belonging of students. Because how can you belong in an institution that uh, celebrates their oppression? You know, this is, uh, this is the idea. And this is now, as you can see in, in, in 2020, but for instance, in South Africa, you had Rhodes Must Fall because Cecil Rhodes is a statue uh, at the university there. So uh, there has always been, you know, a critique, but now there's momentum where the, what's happening in society and what's happening in the educational field are actually strengthening uh, each other's cause. Another example is the call in the US for defunding the police. And uh, the University of Minnesota has announced to cut ties with the Minneapolis police after George Floyd's death. Just to give you an example of how a university is trying to hold, uh, in this case, the police accountable and to, to think of ways how they can contribute to, to social justice and, and in this specific case, how do they relate to their stakeholders and the people they do you know, business with. So this is also an example of how universities engage with these social debates and try to take on uh, their, their role and, and do what they can. The three points that I wanted to offer when it comes to educational institutions and how they can relate to these social uh, movements and discussions that are happening outside of the institution and how to relate it to what's going on within the institution and specifically to contribute to a sense of belonging is one the, the acknowledgement that there is this, this systemic problem what's happening currently is an idea of you know yes maybe students experience some exclusion or discrimination here and there but everyone has good intentions, uh, so you know it's it's not um, it's not that big of a deal. When you acknowledge, if you have a statue of uh, someone who is uh, responsible for genocide in your institution, it is you know unquestioned. Then there is a systemic problem, and we need to address this problem. And the institution has to think about how are they going to reconcile with that. You know, and taking down a statue is one thing, but indeed, Ivana, um, the process that it then generates in, in terms of the curriculum that you have used to, you know, tell uh, certain stories and leave out others, 
maybe you want to put another statue there of people who resisted this specific person, then you still have that history. So how do you acknowledge, you know, the, the, the history in relation to your student population who have been part of that history? So that becomes the next question. How have we contributed to creating this problem? You know, and I think the curriculum, for instance, and knowledge production is, is an important part for self-reflection. What, what stories do we tell? What knowledge do we consider valid? Um, and I think, you know, the, the issues that Sophia raised, uh, what other types of perspectives uh, uh, are part of the conversation and which are left out? How do they relate to the global north, global south? So self-reflection is an important part. And then finally, the action, how can we contribute to solving this problem? And this obviously is a very difficult question because I think this is what we are now having conversations about. But uh, again, I will offer some reflections and see how this can uh, take shape. So in terms of acknowledgement, the question that I would pose is to what extent is the educational institution based on colonial history? So how has colonial history shaped knowledge, shaped power structures? And this is, you know, the intergenerational part of the movement. Uh, are you aware of that it's not just something that is happening now, but has been going on for quite some time? Then also demographics. To what extent is the educational institution a reflection of? society. So are the students that are part of your city or your communities, are they also part of your institution? And if not, what does that, you know, mean in terms of sense of belonging? And again, the curriculum, which I already addressed, to what extent is the curriculum based on Eurocentric perspective? So to at least acknowledge that the, the context and the demographics and the curriculum are factors that play into uh, inclusion, exclusion, and sense of belonging is already an important part of, uh, of the process in my um, perspective. Then the self-reflection part, I think it's important to think about the policies that are in place within institutions and to what extent are they colorblind? To what extent is it an idea of all lives matter? Uh, and to what extent do they really acknowledge and focus on the specific needs, you know, and I think if there's one thing that we've discussed within I Belong is that this is actually part of the challenge that a lot of students face that the policies don't necessarily take into account their specific experiences and their specific starting positions. And then the conversations, you know, uh, Miriam already addressed silence, um, what the silence is compliance. Uh, the idea of you know speaking out and you know to what extent are we willing and able to talk about these issues because willingness is one thing but what we've seen in these types of conversations is we sometimes just don't have the words or the vocabulary to have a constructive conversation sometimes we think you know within our framework of reference and it's hard to to look at it from another perspective if you're not used to looking at things from a different perspective. So these conversations um, are important and I think that we're now in a stage where the conversations are happening you know on a global level and we're trying to connect those conversations and see what we can learn from that. And then power. To what extent are we willing to share or give up power? And I think in that sense, the statue is a good example because the statue of uh, Leopold represents a specific position of power. So if you bring down that statue, it is very symbolic for bringing down a structure, a system that was based on that specific power. And I think a lot of stu students recognize that, that they understand the, the, um, the symbolic value of those statues and are looking for ways to claim their power, you know, and claim their seat at the table and claim their voices being heard and being taken seriously when it comes to shaping new types of uh, policy. And then finally, action. And this is my last slide, and then I look forward to hearing your thoughts and reflections. So 
targets is is one of the things that is you know is important when you talk about a color grape approach data and monitoring the data oftentimes when it when we talk about inclusion we talk about you know uh, quota how do you make sure that you are indeed a reflection of society and again this is a difficult conversation if you're used to colorblind um, conversations safe space is very important and i think this is also something specifically in relation to sense of belonging the students feel safe and you know the the social movement is now actually saying we don't feel safe we don't feel safe in the streets we don't feel safe if we go uh, jogging or if we're just on our way to our family and we're being uh, stopped by the police. So the safe space is not just within an educational institution, but in society as a whole. So if an educational institution is able to create a safe space within that public space that is not always considered safe, uh, that I think would be also a powerful statement or signal towards students and, and having students in the lead to shape what that space needs to look like is very important. And then finally, I would also mention resources. I think uh, time and money invested in, in, in diversity and inclusion is important. You know, at this point in time, there are a lot of students who are maybe being asked to contribute to a panel or to share their experiences. And they've been sharing their experiences for quite some time now. So really, there is a call for action and for, you know, putting your money where your mouth is, basically. Uh, and this is a call on a global level, but I expect that it will also be translated to the educational context. So these are, you know, some reflections that I wanted to share just to give you an idea of how the social movements uh, relate to um, the educational setting. And um, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, please share the, so I'll just, I'll leave it up to you now to uh, offer your reflections.